We will create several files in this process. So we will start by creating a folder to keep them in and then change into that folder. Then we will start by creating our own certificate authority. First we'll create a private key for our certificate authority certificate. And we'll use the OpenSSL GenP key command and tell it to use the RSA algorithm to generate a key that is 2048 bits long and we'll put it in a file named ca.key. Next, we will create our certificate authority certificate. We will use the OpenSSL rec command and tell it to create a new self-signed certificate that expires in 360 days. We tell it to use the key we created in the CA key file as the certificate's private key. We also specify the designated name, or DN, for the certificate. There are many fields that you could add to the DN, but I'm only specifying the two that will show up in the certificate manager when I import this certificate in my browser. And we will output the certificate in a file named ca.crt. You could also choose to name this file ca.pem if you prefer, since it, this certificate is actually encoded in the pem format, but the .crt extension is synonymous with the .pem extension. And once you import this certificate into your browser's certificate authorities, you should see an entry for AAAA test organization with a certificate named testCA under it. Now we will create a cert certificate for our server to use for HTTPS connections. We will create a private key for the server certificate, just like we did for the certificate authority, and put it in a file named server.key. Then we will use the OpenSSL rec command again to create a certificate signing request, which we will use to create the server certificate. Notice that we are not using the dash x509 parameter in this command. That is what makes this command create a certificate signing request instead of a self-signed certificate. And other than the file names being different, we also want to specify the fully qualified domain name of the server in the DN's CN field. Then we will tell it to output the certificate signing request in a file named server.csr. Since I will be using this certificate in my local development environment, I specified my FQDN as localhost. If you enter the wrong value in this field, you will get errors when you try to connect to the server using it. And finally, we will create the server's self-signed certificate using the OpenSSL x509 command. We will set the server's certificate to expire in 360 days, and we will use the dash rec parameter to tell it to use the certificate signing request that we just created to generate the certificate. We will also give the server certificate a serial number and sign the server certificate with our certificate authority certificate and key. Then we will tell it to output our server certificate in a file named server.crt. Now you can use these two certificates to set up an HTTPS server in your local development environment. Remember to import your ca.crt certificate into your browser, or it will not recognize your server certificate and might fall back to sending all traffic over plain HTTP instead. And you can usually find your browser's certificate manager in its advanced settings area. If you are also using X509 user authentication, you can create self-signed certificates for your users to use for authentication. We will again create a private key for the user's certificate, and we will create a certificate signing request that we will use to generate the user's certificate. This time we will specify the user's name in the CN field, and we will add a UID field where we can keep the user's unique identifier, such as a username, ID, email, or anything else that you might use to look that user up in a database or other lookup registry. Then we will generate the self-signed user certificate and sign it with our certificate authority certificate and key. Now we can convert that to .p12 format so that the user can import it into the Your Certificates section of their browser's certificate manager. To do that, we will use the OpenSSL PKCS12 command. We will give it the user's certificate and key. Then we will use the dash export parameter to specify a password. And in this case, I am giving it a blank password. 
and then we will tell it to output the reformatted certificate in a file named client.p12, which your user can import into their browser. That's the basics of creating self-signed SSL certificates. If you are interested in learning more about the OpenSSL command, please check out the documentation at openssl.org docs. Feel free to comment if you have any questions or suggestions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you for watching.